food facts you didn't want to know. There's most likely other people's poop in your fast food drinks. What? Scientists tested samples from Burger King, McDonald's, and KFC and discovered that most of the drinks had traces of fecal coli in them. That's poop particles. Although regulation says that your drink should have 0% of poop, sample from different KFCs and Burger Kings had significant amounts. That poses a serious threat to diners. Fountain machines were tested too. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do, man. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, man, hitting that like button on each and every single video I drop, man. You guys are helping us push us in the algorithm, man. Like I said, we're growing some momentum. Slowly but surely, man, we're growing. We're coming along. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, man. We're about to expose the truth today. Imagine living with someone that you know is trying to end your life. This hidden camera captures a moment this woman puts bleach inside her husband's coffee maker multiple times a day. This is Robbie Johnson and he began setting up cameras all around his house when he started to notice that his coffee was tasting a little off. He wasn't really expecting to catch anything but when he looked back at the footage, he was shocked. His wife Melody is seen pouring a substance inside his coffee maker every single day before he brewed the coffee. Robbie got testing strips and each time it tested positive for chlorine. At this time, Robbie and Melody were in the process of a divorce, but they were still living together. Robbie pretended to drink his coffee every morning and continued to gather evidence so that he can go to police. But when he showed police all this footage, they said that they couldn't see exactly what Melody was pouring into the coffee maker, so he couldn't prove it. So Robbie had to set up even more cameras around the house with different angles so that he can prove that Melody was was in fact poisoning him. Melody was charged with attempted murder and I bet this guy will never let anyone else make him a coffee again. That would is not something that's terribly new, but have you heard about the woman that is haunting AI pictures? Hmm? Face and nobody can explain why she keeps showing up in AI images. If you look at her, she's not really general. I mean, there are specific characteristics here that are consistent. Again, nobody knows which prompts are generating this woman. Nobody knows why her face continues to appear in different models. So this has opened up one of my favorite questions about the idea that AI pictures can be haunted. And don't forget, if things like this are of interest to you, make sure to go check out the podcast. Katy Perry is coming under okay. fire because her upcoming album, it features Dr. Luke. But a lot of people don't know that Katy Perry is allegedly trapped by Dr. Luke. Apparently, there is a lot going on behind the scenes that many people are not aware of. Little history here, Katy Perry was dropped by Columbia Records back in 2006, 2007. She signed with Capitol Records in 2007 at the age of 22. Ooh. Part of that deal was that she was gonna sign a six album production deal with Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke ended up doing her first two albums. He did One of the Boys, he did Teenage Dream, and they were massively successful albums and he began to work on prism so prism came out and it was extremely successful and allegedly it's around this time that luke's services as a producer were bought out by sony but he included a clause that he was still going to be able to honor and finish out his six album deal with katie perry mm. and it was also around this time that kesha came forward with the accusations against dr luke then came this leak. Allegedly, this is a text exchange between Kesha and Lady Gaga around the time of the accusations, which also alleged that Dr. Luke had assaulted Katy Perry and she was stuck with him. So then we got the release of Witness, which did not feature Dr. Luke at all. And people sort of thought that she would never work with him again, but she had only fulfilled three of the six contracted albums. The legal predicament here is that Katy Perry signed her deal at 22 and she is now 39. And if she wants to continue having a career in music, she is legally bound to finish out the remaining three albums. Is that why, like I said, I don't know, then we hear like a couple of months ago how like she showed Katy Perry, she like she showed her old catalog or something for like a ridiculous amount of money. But now she, I guess she's trying to get back into the music scene, but she's stuck with that, I guess, producer, man. She has to make three more with him. See, because, man, that goes to show you got to watch. When you sign a contract, you got to be read the fine print because you never know who you're going to get stuck with. Got to be fully prepared, man, for those consequences. That's crazy that she's stuck with that producer, Luke. Hmm. Where 
Praise the sky. Headache. I'm a bad guy. Damn. Warhol. Woo. Won't want to get bit by one of those. That's common knowledge. Me what this guy accidentally caught on camera. Watch carefully. So fast, you can barely see. Did y'all see that? It's a pale humanoid figure lurking in the background. Rogue encountered like Slender Man or something. Let me know what you guys think this is in the comments below. So you I need out the guy's theories. To be human remains near a neighborhood, and your first thought is to take those human remains to Goodwill. That's what happened in Anderson, South Carolina, yesterday, June 23rd, 2024. It is reported that an individual stumbled across what is believed to be human remains in a gravel lot located in or near a high-end subdivision called Grayland mm. in Anderson, South Carolina. And instead of calling law enforcement, this individual takes those human remains to Goodwill, who then calls law enforcement. Why? Law enforcement does believe these remains to be human. They are searching a wooded area that is said to be in a new development in this subdivision, Grayland, in Anderson, South Carolina. They have also called in an anthropologist from Spartanburg County who is assisting in the case, and the remains have been sent to the FBI for DNA identification. As more information becomes available, I'll share it here, so go ahead and hit the follow button. If you are not already following, there are six different people listed in NamUs who are missing from the Anderson, South Carolina area. I'm not going to list those individuals here because I don't want it to look like I'm speculating that these remains could be one of those individuals. Um, you can do your own research on that. Nasty. That's insane. You can find some human remains and their first thought is to take it to Goodwill, man. That goes to show you how people, they don't be using their minds sometimes. See something like that, man. You just call the police, bro. You don't take it in a Goodwill. What what the hell are they supposed to do with it? They're just going to be just as confused and disgusted by as you. People down there, you see this. The fast food facts you didn't want to know. There's most likely other people's poop in your fast food drinks. What? Scientists tested samples from Burger King, McDonald's, and KFC and discovered that most of the drinks had traces of fecal coli in them. That's poop particles. Although regulation says that your drink should have 0% of poop, sample from different KFCs and Burger Kings had significant amounts. That poses a serious threat to diners. Fountain machines were tested too and they had about 11% of E. coli. Some restaurants rarely clean their ice machine and some restaurant workers that handle your ice don't wash their hands. Hope you have fun drinking poop. Like this video if you want a part two. I ain't drinking no more from from all those restaurants listed. Fast food, make your drink at home. In 2014, a man named Martin took this picture of his daughter in Japan. It wasn't until later that he discovered an eerie thing about this photo. When the photo was taken, there was no man standing behind his daughter. Yet, it appears that there is. Again, if you look closely, you can see a man standing directly behind his daughter. Ooh. People believe that this is a ghost of a samurai or a World War II soldier. He just happened to catch it on camera while trying to take this cute and innocent photo of his daughter. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you believe that this is real? First game you should you? never play. Part 14, the dry bones game. This game could get you anything you can dream of. But you're putting yourself at risk for losing your mind, being killed, or worse. To prepare, close all the doors and windows in your house, and then turn off all the lights. Begin at exactly 12.01. Go into your bathroom and look into the mirror. Make sure everything is silent. If you hear anything, he is already there. Think of something you want. This will be a prize if you win. Strike a match and wait for it to burn out on its own. If it lasts more than 15 seconds, you may continue. Lie down on the floor and recite these words. I am aware of your presence and I welcome you into my home. Go into the biggest room in your house and wait. To know that the game is officially started, you will hear a moan. If you hear anything else, abort. 
Once you hear this, run to your hiding spot and stay there, but remain completely silent. Remain in this place until 3 a.m. Once this time comes, go back to the biggest room in your house and say thank you for playing, but you must leave now. You are no longer welcome. If you did this right, we'll hear another groan signifying that you won, and your prize will be at the door. Nah. They that young? It goes to show you even back then, man, how the world was a dark place. Creepy people who were caught on camera PT.1. So how the way they was at my like, nah, that's why they were aware of their surroundings because I think I was asking some weird questions. Just trying to lurk around in the background. <sighs> Can't even go out and have a good time no more without you always have to be constantly aware. Cause weirdos I'd like that exist. Camera footage PT point three. Question the we need to be asking. The horror movie Smile 2 just came out. And if you remember in 2022, the movie Smile went so viral that literally everyone was talking about it. So mm. I really hope that the sequel will be good because we've been waiting. But I haven't seen the trailer yet, so let's watch it together. Alright. Something really crazy just happened. 
happening to me. I keep seeing his face everywhere. You witnessed the death. Mm. Now it's latched onto you. just run through that whole freaking family line for the son have you guys heard about the disturbing murder of the three girl scouts this is the unsolved murder case of nine-year-old michelle gus 10-year-old doris milner and eight-year-old Lori farmer on june 12 1977 140 girl scouts ages 8 to 18 went to camp scott in oklahoma for two weeks mm. camp scott was super popular in the town but in 1977 nobody was prepared for what was going to happen the very first night that the girls went to sleep in their tents Lori, michelle and doris slept together in tent eight the next morning at 6 a.m a counselor found the lifeless bodies of the three young girls a short distance from their tent all three girls had been sexually assaulted and badly beaten Lori and michelle had been bludgeoned while doris was strangled to death now get this, two months before the trip, a training session was held at Camp Scott and something very alarming happened. A counselor's cabin was ransacked and a disturbing note was found in an empty box of donuts. The note said, we are on a mission to kill three girls in 10 to 1. Even though this note was strange and upsetting, the camp administrators dismissed the entire thing as a prank. The night that the three girls were murdered, a camp counselor remembered hearing 
strange moaning. So she got up and looked around but didn't find anything unusual. The main suspect was an escaped convict that police were desperately looking for and his name is Jean Leroy Hart. He had been convicted of kidnapping and sexually assaulting two pregnant women in the past. Jean was captured 10 months later but regardless of all the evidence found against him, he was not found guilty by the jury. When Jean was sent back to prison for his original crime, he collapsed and died from a heart attack just two months later. A chilling statement was made by Doris's five-year-old little sister just minutes before she left to the camp. Doris's little sister asked their mom, Mommy, what happens when people die? And their mom had tried to explain what happens after death. And that's when the little sister responded with, yeah, but everyone's gonna die tomorrow. I don't know about you guys, but that is super creepy. These murders remain some of the state's most disturbing unsolved cases. Hmm. And those camping trips, I remember, there was like a little, I think I remember when I was a kid, how our school used to go on those um, camping trips as well, but I wasn't a fan of them. I was always opted out. I said, nah, they ain't for me. I just don't trust them. Even as a kid, I wasn't trusting nobody. It's a tragic case, man. Jeffrey Epstein lived in this house in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, and it's been stated that this is the largest private residence in New York. While Epstein was alive, he was visited at this house by a number of famous politicians and celebrities, mm. including infamously Prince Andrew, who claimed nothing happened while he was there. I think the artwork on the house is a little eerie, to say the least, and I'm sure it's symbolic in its own way. Now, multiple bodyguards and people have gone on the record and said that inside of Epstein's house, there was a brain room, or a room filled floor to ceiling with security monitors. This would mean that every single inch of Jeffrey Epstein's house was being videotaped or photographed at every moment. Mm. And still, to this day, there are tons of cameras on the exterior. I myself was a little freaked out after standing in front of this house, knowing that I was just captured on like five different angles. But this would mean that all of the trafficking, the assaults against minors that happened in this house, all of that was caught on camera. And that's true, it was. Because Epstein was running a blackmail operation. It's too much to get into now, but if you want to hear me expose the true story, you can listen to the first episode of my show, The Conspiracy Files, on all platforms. It's literally right there. He's had all that footage recording for what, man? Just found out, just exposed him at the end. Somebody have their house covered inch by inch. We understand a few, but inch by inch in every single room, they, they're trying to see something. See, kids, if you guys made it with me to the end of the video, you're a true one. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Like I said, guys, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, hit that post notification bell. We're growing slowly but surely, man. We're going to take off in this algorithm, but I appreciate all my supporters that I have right now. You guys can catch it in the next one, man. We out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my um, supporters, man. If you guys are tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, man, hitting that like button on each and every video. You guys are pushing us in the hour with it, man, like I said. One day, man, we're just going to go take off and explode, but got to keep building our momentum up. Um, also, man, as you guys can see, it may, I know I got a couple of comments on my shirt last time when I wore this, man. It really has my name, D-A-E-M-O-N, but the A is kind of faded, so that's why it looks like that. Just to give you guys an explanation, because you guys know we ain't into that, man. But I found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best and seek the truth married by this person who he thought was a woman. In 2023, this 26-year-old Indonesian man named AK met Adinda Kansa on Instagram where they hit it off and eventually met in person and started their relationship. Catfish. Throughout their relationship, Adinda wore a hijab that covered her head, her face, except for her eyes because of her religion. A year mm. later, they got married and had a very small ceremony with only AK's family attending and Adinda's family was not there because she 
she said that her entire family had passed away. After they tied the knot, Aki became extremely suspicious of his new wife because she constantly avoided any intimacy and was always making excuses. But also, AK said that Adinda was wearing her hijab at home at all times, so at this point he knew that she was hiding something. He then began searching for any information he could find on his wife and that's when he found her old address and when he went to go visit that home, he found her parents which she said were dead. The parents told AK that Adinda is actually a man and they had no idea that they got married. Adinda was arrested and after an investigation was done, it was determined that he intended to marry AK so that he can steal his family's assets. Adinda was charged with fraud and if convicted, he faces up to four years in prison. Whatever you do. You guys think that should be the fate for all catfishes out there, man? Because that's basically what it was. We're going to call it speed for speed. That was a catfish. Like, how the hell? But how did he let it go that far, man? He got married to him and he didn't even know? That's mind blowing, man. If you're going on with somebody, man, you got to do your research nowadays. That's crazy. Do never go searching for this video. Hmm? These five friends were forced to kill each other by the Mexican cartel. These five young aged from 19 to 22 were looking for some sort of employment, and they were promised a high-paying job at a call center. But when the alleged contact was taking them to meet the people for the job, it actually turned out to be a whole scheme to recruit them to the Mexican cartel. And when all five of these boys said they didn't want to join, the cartel then said okay and tied them up, taped their mouth and took a picture and then recorded one of the friends killing all the other four friends. Ooh. And after that they put the fifth one who just killed all of his friends into a car and set it on fire. I am telling you right now, do not go searching for this video because you will find it. And trust me, you do not want to see something like this. This case is absolutely horrific and the fact that this happens way more often than we think it's just extremely scary and disturbing. It's just sad that these young men were just trying to get a job and make some money for themselves. But instead, it turned into a living nightmare. Rest in peace, these five young men. Here's That's one more piece. reason to be terrified of the ocean. Of course, it's scary when the sea is stormy, but according to Japanese legend, you should be more afraid of calm waters. Mm. Because that is when the umibozu is said to rise from the deep. This ghostly pitch black figure will not only scare you into a state of shock, but it will then throw you overboard and drown you in the sea. It is cool Damn. that no one knows what this guy is doing right now. A man is attempting to become the first person ever to walk the entire length of the United States bare foot. He started his over 5,000 kilometer walk in February, and as you'd imagine, his feet have already taken an absolute battering. He's already had to walk through snow, which he says was so cold that it makes every pebble feel like you're walking over a Lego brick. But if the cold wasn't bad enough, he will soon have to walk through the Midwestern summer heat, which will easily reach temperatures of over 100 degrees. And because of that, similar to Russ Cook running through the Sahara, he says that he's going to have to walk overnight because during the day, the paving will just be too hot. He's almost been hit multiple times by massive semi-trucks not paying attention and pushing him off the road. The nerve endings on his feet are so bruised from stepping on rocks that it keeps him up at night. He's had really bad infections that haven't had enough time to heal. Because if he does take days off and doesn't make it to New York before the winter, he is screwed. And the part which just blows my mind, he's doing all of this to raise awareness for men's mental health because he himself, after leaving the army, fell into such a deep depression that it led him to the edge of a cliff. But despite this amazing cause and what he's putting himself through, he has only 139 followers on TikTok and only 412 on YouTube. I mean, that should be illegal. He's got about six months of walking left to do. So please, let's show this man some support and push him through. That's crazy, man. He's doing that for a good cause, and hopefully, man, just catches some fire, catches some heat, so more people are aware of that. Barefoot, too? That's a different type of breed right there, man. Have you heard the creepy story behind this photo? What? She's been named the Expressionless. Well, the story takes place in June of 1972. Hospital employees were very shocked and scared when this woman entered the hospital wearing a blood-soaked gown. What was terrifying is that she had no emotion on her face. When the doctors went to sedate her to see what was wrong, she started to fight back. This is her in that very moment. Now this is a creepypasta, but some believe that this photo is actually true and that this is a real creepy ass woman. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
Follow you guys think? His- this is a real sign in a city called Davo in the Philippines. And there's a lot of history behind it. Mm-hmm. Now, as you can see in the sign, it says, Waving children, please wave back with a pair of children with their arms up. This sign serves as a warning to everyone passing by that there are ghosts of children in the area. It's believed there's a ton of supernatural activity all around the area, and if you don't wave back, these children will come and haunt you. Upon researching the story, I haven't found anyone reporting that they haven't waved back to any of the children. I've only heard accounts of people waving back and then being okay afterwards. So with that information in my head, I can only assume the worst happens if you don't wave back. So obviously, if you're traveling in the Philippines and you see a child wave to you, wave back for your own safety. The last thing you want is a ghost child following you and haunting you for the rest of your life. Let me know what you guys think about this. I also covered a video on the Aswan, which is another Filipino urban legend. Very scary stuff. Definitely go check that out. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. You guys waving back, man? Nah, I wouldn't want no ghost, no spirits, bad energy. Juju following me, so I don't have to... Yeah, way back. I don't need that following me around. This is a true horrifying story, part 32. In parts 25, 26, and 27, I warned you all about the most dangerous book that was ever written, Shams al Ma'arif. This book is a portal to the world of jinns and demons. There's a person that read this book, and this person faces traumatic incidents every single day. She's a woman from Jordan. She graduated university being the top graded student. She is a genius. She has read hundreds of novels. Mm. She had a strong passion for books. She heard about this book called Shams al Ma'arif. She couldn't live knowing that there's a book that has a strong story behind it without reading it. After many months of trying to find the real copy of this book, she heard about an old man that lives in Jordan that had an ancient copy of Shams al Ma'arif. She got in touch with him and he refused to sell the book, but she didn't quit. It took her many weeks to finally buy the book off of him. She goes back home and immediately starts reading the book. After she read the first few chapters of the book, she felt kind of hungry, so she decided to go to the kitchen and prepare some food and then continue reading. As she goes into the kitchen, she opens the oven and a gale of fire burns her face. She spent three weeks in the burn unit rehabilitation. The oven was switched off. No one knows till this day where the flames came from. She had multiple plastic surgeries to recover her facial features. But till this day, her face is not what it used to be. After recovery, she goes home weeks later and she looks for the book, knowing that the jinn was the reason she was harmed. She tried to find the book for many days, but it was lost. Years go by. She was home watching TV one day. She came across an Islamic channel that had a live interview program. An Mm. old man was being interviewed on this channel. He was asked by the imams about the dangers of a black magic book that he owns. His body was very unusual and his face was burned off. He got a book from under the table and he said this. I once sold this book to a young woman a long time ago and the demons warned me not to stop my rituals and if I gave the book away they would burn my face and they would burn hers. And after I gave the book I woke up the next day without my normal face and the book I sold to that woman was right there laying next to me on bed. I knew that it was the jinns that brought the book back to me and this is when I strengthened my iman and I quit black magic. Coat. This was all said on TV, and the poor girl was just standing there, mm-hmm. watching the same man speak. The man on TV was the man that gave her the book. The book he showed on TV was the book he handed to her. That was the book that was lost. The book that she was looking for. Damn, it sounded like she got tempted by that knowledge. She just couldn't turn it down. Look what happened. Like some bad spirits was following her. Like the lit book. Part I'm trying to figure out is how the book, like, it just went back to the man's house. Did he take it back, or was it just there the next day? That's something to think about. This is Tragedy by the Sea, one of the most disturbing and sad photos of all time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first glance of this photo, you just think it's a couple arguing at the beach, right? But believe it or not, this photo might have the most unsettling and disturbing backstory ever. On the morning of April 2nd, 1954, Los Angeles Times photographer named John Gaunt, who was pictured in the middle of this photo, was relaxing on his front yard of his beachfront house when he heard a neighbor shout, something's happening on the beach. 
He then instinctively grabbed his camera and rushed over to see the horrified couple clutching each other on the beach. On the shore stood a young couple named Mr. and Mrs. McDonald, and their body language made John's stomach turn. He realized that someone must be lost, and he then took a photograph from 200 yards away. Only then did he learn that just moments before, the couple's 19-month-old son Michael, who had been playing in the yard, had wandered down to the beach and crawled into the violent water while they weren't looking. Despite the back and forth efforts by the parents, there was nothing they can do but just wait. Unfortunately, later that day, the child's dead body was washed up about a mile away on the beach. And this photo, titled Tragedy by the Sea, appeared on the front page of the Times the very next day. John Gaunt then won the 1955 Pulitzer Prize Award, calling the photo poignant and profoundly moving. But he also received heavy criticism for capitalizing on the family's tragedy for his photo opportunity. But now, take a look at this photo, knowing everything you do, and tell me it's not one of the saddest and most disturbing photos ever. Let's talk about this is. picture. Captured in 2008 by Daniel Young, this is one of the only pieces of evidence that this encounter actually happened. So Daniel was a custodian at Myrtle Elementary School, where he worked the night shift. It's a pretty routine night, he's just listening to music, when he's suddenly interrupted by the sound of a woman's laughter. He turned around and was terrified when he saw an unknown woman smiling from behind the corner. This was a locked school on after hours, so clearly she was an adult who broke in, so he tried to snap a picture to identify her and then chases after her. But when he turned the corner, she had already darted out of an emergency exit. Later mm. that night, police are called to a home where they arrive at a tragedy. Unknown woman had broken into a nearby home where she knifed two parents, one who was the principal of this school, so brutally they were unrecognizable. One of the daughters who witnessed this woman before she got away described her as this person. Could this photo be of the same unknown woman? And what her connection is to the school and the principal, we don't know. Most disturbing Man. videos in the world. Episode 6. This picture contains a list of disturbing videos from the least scary to the most. This will be my scariest series ever. Welcome to Tier 7 because we skipped a couple of them. And honestly, today we're going to skip directly to Tier 10. The mm. first video is titled Funky Town. This video single-handedly could be the worst video the internet has ever had. Now, obviously, I can't show the video here, but I can tell you everything you need to know about it. And please remember, don't look this up. Trust me. It I shows a man, do. you know, getting executed, in which they remove the man's face all while he's still alive and lots of other stuff start happening and in the background of the video the song funky town starts playing you know this song yeah that one make sure to like and follow because i start my brand new series tomorrow those videos man where they always had like break it down and explain there's an always chilling man and i never look i take him at a word i never looked it up because i don't need that in my mom but the way they break it down with the details especially about sebastian on tank 22 we we know, man. Crazy to how people can even do that to another human being. Edit, hey, man. You guys, I'm gonna see how you guys call out the edits, man, down below as well. If y'all guys can spot them out, cause I might miss some too. I can correct me, man. We all the community, yo. So. This is the disturbing moment this woman laughed in court after she took this three-year-old's life in a random attack. On June 3rd, police received numerous phone calls about a stabbing at a grocery store parking lot in Ohio. At around 3 p.m. on this day, 38-year-old Margo Wood was loading groceries into her car while her three-year-old son, Julian, sat in his car seat. That's when 32-year-old Bianca Ellis entered the car and began stabbing the little boy. When Margo noticed, she tried to stop the attacker and as a result, she was also wounded. Julian was then rushed to the hospital where he unfortunately passed away. Now, what's disturbing was that this was a random attack. And after looking at surveillance footage, the attacker was seen following the mother and the child in and out of the grocery store. Then, when Bianca was brought into court, the judge began reading out the indictment and she was seen smiling and laughing the entire time. And after an assessment was done on Bianca, there are arguing that she has bipolar disorder and had a psychotic break, which explains why she did what she did. And this story only gets crazier. Before this incident, Bianca confessed to another murder in Bakersfield, and she even gave details of what she did with this person's body. She also mm. warned officers that if she wasn't arrested, she was going to murder someone and eat their flesh. But none of this was taken too serious, and she was released from the mental institution, and not long after, she committed this heinous crime crime so let's talk Come about on, the most man. disturbing animated film ever made that has been banned all over the world 
1992's Midori. Our main character is 12-year-old Midori. After her mother becomes extremely ill, she is tricked into joining a traveling circus. And these are some of the fine people that she is surrounded by every day. The film contains a lot of very explicit scenes of violence and other things towards young Midori. The film is also known for its animal content. When it was originally released, Midori was banned all over the world, including in its own home country of Japan. And I can definitely see why. I'm not kidding when I say this is probably the most graphic, strange, animated film that has probably ever been made. And this is most certainly not a film for a lot of people. It's a film I really don't feel like I can recommend, but there are lots of very interesting discussions around the morality of this film. And if you've seen this film, I'd love to know what you guys think of it. Hell no, I didn't even know that film existed. It really was banned all around the world. The man you just saw walking in that video was pedophile Jeffrey Doucette. Jeffrey was a 25-year-old karate instructor. Jeffrey gave karate lessons to young boys, and it's assumed that he did this to gain access to children because he was a pedophile. Now, at some point along the way, Jeffrey met the son of a man named Gary Plouche. Gary was a very protective father who loved his son dearly. And when Gary eventually found out that Jeffrey had been molesting his son for over a year, he was righteously angry. But Gary just wasn't going to let this slide. You see, for a year, Gary had trusted Jeffrey to take care of his son and teach him karate. But at one point, Jeffrey had abducted his son, taken him to a motel in Anaheim, California, and did absolutely unspeakable things to him. So that leads us to the infamous televised incident. On that day, Jeffrey was flown to Louisiana to face trial. There was a news team there waiting for him at the airport for when he arrived into the state, but there was somebody else waiting for Jeffrey there as well, Gary Plache. I can't show you the full clip, obviously, but Gary was waiting for Jeffrey to walk down the hallway, and when he walked by him, he pulled out a handgun and shot Jeffrey, the man who molested his son, directly in the head. Afterwards, Gary gave himself up, dropped the gun, and he was initially charged with second-degree murder. But he entered a plea bargain and pled no contest to the manslaughter mm. charges. He was then sentenced to seven years of a suspended sentence, with five years of probation and 300 hours of community service meaning that Gary spent no extended time in prison for the murder of the pedophile. To this day, people still sell merchandise with Gary Plouche all over it, as he has become a folk hero of sorts to people that hate pedophiles. If you want to hear more stories like this, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available to listen to now on all streaming platforms. The more you know, I never knew they sell merch about that incident. I guess you say he was a hero. Yeah, you're on some people's eyes, man, because you know we don't know that over here, but that's an insane story. The person you just saw in that video was former elected official and pedophile Stacy Marie Lofton. Stacy was the first openly transgender person elected to a state legislature anywhere in the United States. And people at the time in New Hampshire who elected Stacy thought that this was extremely radical. They were proud that they were inclusive and that they were giving power to an underrepresented population. Mm. However, Stacy would go on to do some terrible things. Because you see, in 2023, Stacy would be arrested and charged with possession of CP or CSAM. I still don't know the exact connection, but Stacy was arrested as well as this woman, a 38 year old woman named Lindsay Groves. Now, Lindsay worked at a place called Creative Minds Early Learning Center in Massachusetts, where she worked closely with children. And Man. apparently, Lindsay would use the bathroom breaks during the children's school day to take photographs of them. Photographs of them in compromising positions with no clothing on. Lindsay would then send these photos to the person she was in a relationship with, and I guess somehow some of those photos ended up in Stacy's possession. Now, I don't know what happened to Stacy after all of this, but I do know that it was reported that Stacy went to a prison for men. And yeah, this is just some really disturbing stuff. If you want to listen mm. to more true crime stories, listen to the podcast that I co-host with my wife, Courtney, Murder in America. It's available now on all streaming platforms. It's to always people in those people in positions, people. man. Number power. 10 is Saddam Hussein. We all remember Saddam. Uh, number 9, Kim Jong-il, who is the uncle and the former leader of... Uh, Kim Jong Un mm. of North Korea, and uh, he was even worse than Kim Jong Un. Like, even though Kim Jong Un is bad, like we got we got a step up from Kim Jong Il. I remember reading that he once fed his family to dogs. Number eight is Genghis Khan, uh, the guy you know, 
the Mongolia Chinese Wall, the Great Wall of China forced everybody to do that. Oh. Number seven, Heinrich Himmler, one of the right-hand men in the Nazi party, was just all around evil. Number six, Paul Pot, terrible man, uh, maybe was one of the most ruthless killers in history. Number five, Mao Zedong, the terrible emperor of China. Mm. Number four, Osama bin Laden, the fool who committed 9-11 and went in hiding, and then we all forgot about him until Obama was like, we're actually going to go get him now, and I was like, thank God. Number three, okay. Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler is the basis for the character of Dracula. His middle name was Dragula, Ooh. and he was known for impaling his victims on sticks and posing them in front of the castle. Number two, Joseph Stalin, who was the leader of Russia during World War II, and he was basically one of the most ruthless killers as well. He, he had concentration camps for the Russians that didn't support him, and it, you know millions of people died mm. under him. If you like this list and want more lists about other nonsense, follow me. Leave me a comment with the most evil person in history in your book. Also follow my Instagram and fiance Samantha, who I've tagged. Number one, I can't even say his name on TikTok, but we all know who it, who it is. Evil Austrian mustache man. Think twice before you answer the door on Halloween night. On Halloween night in 1984, a pregnant mom named Doreen Herbert heard the doorbell ring. She opened the door to find someone in a wolf mask holding a machete. This was like a scene straight out of a horror movie, and she was viciously slaughtered in front of her four-year-old daughter. Special attention had been made to harm the fetus as well, and it was found under this chair. Luckily, when the attack started, her daughter hid behind the couch, and then the man in the wolf mask paced around the house looking for her. The man in the mask shouted that if she said anything, he was going to come back and kill her too. Crime scene investigators noticed a trail of blood leading from the house down the sidewalk and across the freeway to a nearby neighborhood. This attack happened shortly after her husband left to go to the store, and mm -hmm. he came home just a few minutes after she died. But luckily, officers did their due diligence. Looking into Doreen's past, they found out she had a tumultuous marriage with her ex-husband, Michael Dennis. And they actually had a child that drowned under Doreen's supervision in 1980. Two years later, this distraught ex sued Doreen for the death of their child, but lost in court. Mm -hmm. And just hours after the murder, the police paid a visit to Michael Dennis. He was calm and collected and gave consent to search, but as he reached out to sign the form, they noticed a gash on his hand. He said he got this injury from carving pumpkins the day before, but they noticed that the blood was still clotting. No. He began to walk detectives up towards his bedroom and lunge towards the bed, and they were luckily able to tackle him before he grabbed his revolver. And also inside the house, they found blood near the washing machine, and blood was all over his car door handle and steering wheel. Caught him. His past girlfriend also said that the previous Halloween, he went to a party wearing a wolf mask, pictured here. Michael Dennis was charged for the death of Doreen and her unborn child. And due to the brutality, he was actually given the death penalty. Michael Dennis had never moved on and hated Doreen for finding love and having another And I have to say, if you've lost a child, Halloween is probably a really difficult day to look outside and see kids running around everywhere. But that does not excuse his actions. Let me know what case you want me to cover next and follow for more true crime. It is wild. This Out of is that actually poor story. happening. Celebrities are now losing thousands of followers in an unprecedented TikTok trend where Ooh. people are deliberately blocking the rich and famous so that they lose their sponsorships, their brand deals, and ultimately money. And you know what? It's working. So here's how the blockout trend started, and more interestingly, why? This mm. is Hailey Bailey. She's a model and a content creator. And she doesn't know it yet, but she's about to trigger a massive digital revolution against the world's celebrities and herself, all with one video. Let them eat cake. But to understand why what she did here caused so much outrage, we need to go back to the 1800s. I'm not even joking, the Queen of France in 1774 has somehow triggered a massive revolution on TikTok in 2024. Marie Whoa. Antoinette was actually the last queen before the French Revolution, because at a time where the country was in extreme debt and the people were living in poverty and famine, Marie was seen living a lavish lifestyle and spending huge amounts of money on unnecessary things. For example, she was best known for her extreme looks and love for fashion. Her annual clothing budget alone was equivalent to today's $3.6 million. That's 300k a month. But ironically, what she is most remembered for is the time that she was told that the public were starving and they didn't have enough bread to eat. To which she replied, let them eat cake. And I say it's ironic because it's believed that 
she never actually even said this. Regardless, the public's anger grew and led to a revolution and ultimately her execution. So back to 2024 when Hailey Bailey dressed up as Marie Antoinette and used a trending sound saying, let them eat cake. While outside the Met Gala, where tickets cost more than the average down payment for a house, she quickly became the modern Marie Antoinette and triggered the blockout revolution. Mm. Now since then, she has apologized and said she didn't know the implications of that quote before she used it. And while the anger started with just her video, with one of the top comments saying, we're giving you the Marie Antoinette experience, it quickly grew to all of the celebrities that attended that event and beyond. The Hunger Games societal disparity became the movement theme, with hundreds of people commenting, watching from District 12. Creators started making videos showing off their own daily celebrity block lists. Oh. And the people who joined the trend say that the movement is simple. Just like how the French people's taxes were funding Antoinette's lavish lifestyle while they starved. Today, the public's attention is often what funds these celebrities' lifestyles. And so people say if they're using this attention money similar to Antoinette on massive unnecessary displays of wealth, or while people around the world struggle and starve, that attention and therefore money will be removed. And that's how and why the block trend started. So the question is, do you agree with this trend or are people taking it way too far? I ain't gonna lie, nah. The block out trend, man, we need to get on that. I ain't even know about that. I mean, I guess it kind of applies. I guess it should go for, like, certain people, certain celebrities, because, you know, some people help, but she said let them eat cake, but and she knows she was at the Matt Gala saying she didn't know, I guess, the meaning behind that quote. But you're at the Matt Gala, like, that's an expensive place to be at. You saying that, so the stories kind of don't add up. But hey, man, people, they trying to take their power back, man. Like, because if you think about it, what he says, right, like, we, if you follow a celebrity or you're giving them attention, you're basically, you're funding their lifestyle. You're giving them all that money. So, that goes to show you, man, when people say they're doing a celebrity block, if you block it and you're supporting them, man, that, that's going to cut, like, your sponsorship money and stuff in half. So, hey, hey, man, people got to understand, man. We people, man, the ordinary people, we got the power if we band together. <sighs> Crazy man. If you guys stay with me to the end of the video, your true seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, man. Like I said, guys, um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, man. Follow me on my social medias down below. Like I said, man, we're, we're posting every single day, so I would really appreciate the support. You guys, can catch you in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, man, hitting that like button on each and every single video. You guys don't know how much you guys are helping out the channel just by doing those three simple steps. You guys help pushing us into the algorithm, man. One day we're just going to take off and explode, but right now we're building momentum. Found this video for you guys today, man. A lot of stuff came out. Let's do what we do best, seekers. <laughs> Let's seek the truth. Beat the system, part four. Personally, mm. this woman really wanted to bring her bottle of water on a flight. But if you've ever traveled on an airplane, you'll know that you can't carry more than 3.4 ounces of liquid with you. So in 2013, she came up with a genius loophole. She carried a large can of water with her, but the water was frozen. And according to the law, you can't carry water in a liquid state, but you can bring frozen water. Moving on, you can't bring alcohol to a music festival. But in 2017, a man named Alex Diamond came up with a genius idea. A few days before the Electric Zoo Music Festival, he went to the site and buried a water bottle filled with alcohol, pinning the exact location on Google Maps. A few days later, when the festival started, he went to the same spot and dug up the bottle. Finally, this kid was having fun playing games on his computer, until his parents told him to go outside and play. So he took his computer outside and started playing there. Those 5,000 IQ moves, man. Hello, we see watching. Those are definitely some edits, right? This might be the scariest thing that ever happened to America. We all know that America had a lot of scary things happen to it, but this has to be the scariest thing ever. On August 29th, 1968, every single TV in America shut down. But a demonic whispering was coming from every TV in America. Many people believe that it was the devil trying to get across some message. 
but nobody really understood it. This lasted for about 25 seconds, then all the TVs came back on. To this day, nobody knows what caused it or why it happened, but everybody believes it was the works of the devil. After what do you guys think? What was that? What was the cause of all those TVs going out and for this playing that audio? Was the message trying to get through? Were they testing something? Because you know how they be testing stuff with the TVs. Some questions, man, that's coming into my mind. After a massive manhunt, the missing hiker has been found alive after 10 days. And Ooh. how he survived is crazy. 34 year old Luke has only planned an afternoon hike in California's oldest state park. So he set out with very few supplies and not even a t shirt, expecting to return home in a few hours. However, he soon became disorientated as recent wildfires had destroyed familiar landmarks. And since Lucas didn't tell anyone where he was going, Elon was only raised after he missed Father's Day lunch five days after he set out. This sparked a massive manhunt involving nearly 300 people and multiple agencies. While they searched, Lucas wandered the forest, slept on wet leaves, foraged for berries, and drank water he collected from his boots. Without a t-shirt or any supplies to start a fire, he developed hypothermia. He was stalked by a mountain lion and things got really bad when he got injured after slipping on a wet rock face. Lucas Ooh. lost over 30 pounds and spent the last 48 hours just lying there screaming for help. On day 10, a drone and a sniffer finally found him and at last he was reunited with his family waiting for him on the forest edge man goes to show you everybody needs to have some natural i guess camping ability or skills because you never know what could happen or you would be put in that situation interviews with serial killers. Serial killer John Hughes. John Hughes was convicted of 15 murders and sentenced to life in prison in 2010. Damn. When he was interviewed and asked if he would kill again, he said this. Because you'd kill again. More than positive. I got different thoughts. Then he was asked if he felt bad for the murders he had committed, and this is what he said. You don't feel bad about killing uh, anyone? Not personally, but I've personally done myself, no. Why? Wrong place, wrong time. All over more. Very eerie, man. A no remorse. Do you know how weird time is? If you have two twins that are 20 years old and you sent one of them to the star Sirius at 99% the speed of light and then flew back again, the twin who stayed on Earth would be 37 years old and the twin who was traveling would only be 22 years old. Every single person on Earth, including you, is living in the past because our brains don't perceive an event until about 80 milliseconds after it's already happened. It is a very fine line, but that's why some physicists argue that there's no such thing as the present moment. The way that you perceive mm. the passing of time is heavily dependent on the language you use. People in most Western cultures perceive the passing of time as being left to right, because that's how we write, but other cultures perceive it as up to down, east to west, or right to left. Time is actually passing faster for your face than it is for your feet, because the closer you are to the center of the earth, the slower time moves. A year at the top of Mount Everest is 15 microseconds shorter than it is at sea level. Wow. Really? camera footage. In 2017, a mother in Billings, Montana woke up in the middle of the night to a notification on her phone. Her phone was sent to a baby monitor she had set up in her infant daughter's room. On this night, upon being alerted, she opened the app expecting to see her daughter awake in the crib. But instead, she saw this. A man she didn't know is seen crouched down in the room, 
She saw this and ran to the room to retrieve her daughter and run out the house. She didn't see anyone in the room but wasn't exactly looking. When she called the cops they arrived and conducted a search of the home but didn't find anything. A very odd detail is that it was found that nothing but the remote to a dog shot collar was stolen from the house. Who this man is and how he got in the house is still unknown. That's crazy. That's really like one of my worst fears. Like somebody's in your house and you have no idea they were there. Like, that's very creepy and eerie, man. How somebody could be in your house and they could be in that vicinity for so long and you have no idea. That's insane. Where's this guy? Add it. Call it out like you see it. There's no for that it's Okay. What I'm about to show you is a simulation of what happened to Alaskan Flight 261 following a catastrophic loss of pitch control killing all 88 people on board. This is real audio footage of the plane going down between the pilots and air traffic control. Mm. The plane went inverted meaning it was flying upside down and just listen to how calm the pilots are. No survivors? So calm. Genius people who beat the system, Ooh. part one. This student was only allowed to have a one-page cheat sheet, so they wrote a whole page of notes in blue pen and another page in red pen. They then brought 3D glasses to class, so when they looked through the blue side, they could see the red pen, and when they looked through the red side, they could see the blue pen. This guy's new job required a photo of him in a suit for their new website, but since he doesn't own a suit, he just photoshopped his face over this guy's face, and honestly, it looks pretty real. Mm. A girl's dad went to Vegas for five days and put a camera in the living room to make sure she didn't have any parties. But the girl wasn't going to let that stop her from partying, so she came up with a pretty creative solution. This parking spot says only green vehicles can park there, but I think the owner of this car took that a bit too literally. This kid's mom told him that food wasn't allowed in the living room and his tablet wasn't allowed in the kitchen, so it's safe to say that he beat the system. People, man. When they want to beat the system, they'll think of something. What the oh hell is that? God. This creature, nay, this nightmare, is something so incredibly rare. It is likely that none of you have ever heard tell of its kind before. It's called a turtle. <gasps> what? Here's some of That's the greatest kind of conspiracy possibly. theories of all time. Part 4. The Grinch has a well-known backstory about hating Christmas. However, eventually in the movie, his heart grows three sizes and he loves Christmas once again. But this story may continue longer than we think. It is clear that the Grinch isn't exactly right in the head, hmm. but during one of the Grinch's wacky stunts, he could have gotten a head injury. This injury would later take a toll on him as he grew old and caused him to lose his memory. After him and his dog died, they were given a new life in a realm called Halloween Town where they now lived as Jack Skellington in Zero. He later reunites with his love for Christmas, just like he had when he was alive. Both eventually wear a Santa suit, both deliver presents, and both have a dog companion. Hmm. It may be possible that How the Grinch Stole Christmas and The Nightmare Before Christmas are tied together. Connected, man? Media's connecting? Blood-curdling facts that you wish you never knew. 
Part 16. Kangaroos are absolutely terrifying, and if you mess with one, it will likely lure you into the water and attempt to drown you. The There's an abandoned Disney park that you aren't allowed to go to, and it was shut down in 1999 because it was infested with free-roaming alligators, the animals were being abused, and an 11-year-old boy died from a flesh-eating bacteria found in the park's waters. In the movie The Wizard of Oz, the lion's costume was made out of a real skinned lion. This is the John Lawson house. No one knows who lives there, but every single day, there are several female mannequins sitting on the front porch wearing a variety of clothing. Their positions and outfits change daily, and many believe this is meant to convey some sort of message. Mm. And in 1871, a train crash took place just 200 feet away from the home, killing 22 people. And these mannequins are always pointing toward the crash. This is That's some crazy info, especially about those mannequins outside the house. I think somebody commented on, like, they gave a reason why that, why that's there, but... Need to check that out again. But the things we heard about the um, saying when there the skin lines we can see, there was a lot of rumors that some weird stuff was going on behind that movie. So, I mean, you know how Hollywood is nowadays. So, now imagine back in the days what was going on there. Inuit tribe crafted tools out of space metal. 10,000 years ago, this meteorite landed in the Arctic in northern Greenland. An entire Inuit community sprang up around it just to make tools from the iron in the meteorite, which mm. resulted in badass stuff like this, a spear made from a narwhal tusk tipped with space metal. They didn't even have enough wood to like make fires to actually forge the metal, so they had to cold forge it, just hammering it with giant stones until it was the right shape. The tools were so valuable, they were traded as far away as Norway. Damn. It kind of sounds like a Wakanda figure like origin story. How the metal just fall to earth and they just made weapons out of it or just forged it. It's actually insane. The parallels for to, um, between those two um, freaking um, um, when the famous bear stories. in history was just a cub, his mother was slain by hunters, and the poor orphan was carried off to a train station in Iran. But when he was rescued by Polish soldiers fleeing the Soviet Union, they bottle fed him back to health with milk and honey. And on cold nights, he even cuddled up next to them in their tents, imitating the soldiers who learned how to smoke, drink, and wrestle. And when the men went on patrol, he'd march alongside them on his hind legs. When a spy broke into the Polish camp, he sniffed him out while hiding in the showers. And when the intruder laid eyes on his furry foe, his panic screamed alerted every soldier within miles to his presence. But when the Poles boarded British boats bound for the Italian campaign of World War II, they were presented with a strict policy prohibiting pets on their ships. Yet not willing to leave the brown bear behind, they found a loophole and formally enrolled him into the Polish army as a private. During the famous Battle of Monte Cassino, the Germans had fortified a monastery upon a hill and had devastatingly repulsed three prior attacks. Mm -hmm. But carrying crates of ammunition that would normally require four strong men, the courageous cub charged up the hill, successfully resupplying the Polish artillery. And even in the face of heavy enemy fire, he never dropped a single crate, allowing Allied forces to capture the stronghold and gaining promotion to corporal for his bravery. After the war ended, the Iron Curtain prevented the Poles from returning home, and so the brave bear was brought to a zoo in Scotland, where he was frequently visited by his fighting friends, who would often bring him treats and jump into his enclosure for a good rest. And it's said that for the rest of his life, he would happily stand up and salute whenever he heard Poland. When you're the most ferocious furry fighting force to ever fight for the free world, they don't just call you the greatest bear. They call you Corporal Wojtek. Could you live on a pillow for that? decades without coming down? It sounds impossible, but this was actually a way of life that emerged around the 5th century CE in the Eastern Roman Empire. Mm. These Christian ascetics were known as stylites. They would eat, sleep, fast, write, all on top of a pillar for years without coming down. They would rely on the locals to give them food. The earliest known stylite was a man named Simeon. He was a Christian ascetic from the 5th century CE, uh, near the city of Aleppo in Syria. He wanted to be left alone, so he climbed up a pillar. But he actually became more popular when he climbed up and started living on here, so his plan sort of backfired. Mm -hmm. He ended up spending around 37 years living on a pillar. Travelers would climb up ladders to reach him just to have a conversation. Certainly an interesting way of life. I this had to stay up there for so mind. long. So this preacher from Zimbabwe claims he can walk on air. Okay. Is this an edit? 
Well, I'm convinced. Fail, Messiah! There's definitely no other explanation for why his feet were off the ground. Like, people on the side holding him up. That, that's definitely not what happened. It's not like you can see the shadow of the door closing on his left when you slow down the footage. Just shut up and tell me where to donate my money. I mean, come on, it's not like people use religion to scam people. I mean, yes, the preacher has a nicer house than all of us, but then again, he walks on air and we don't. Case closed. Is he scamming like that? And people who believe in Terrifying that? sounds extinct animals used to admit, and the last one's the worst. If you don't know this extinct mega chicken, you must be living your life under a rock. This is a dodo bird. Three feet tall, 45 pounds, and a pair of chicken wings that are more useless than a penguin's. It can make an omelet for a family and produce a sound that would cause me to move to Mars. <laughs> the lizard that got in your bag of trash, the Velociraptor. Or should I say Jurassic Myth, because they didn't look like this at all. Hollywood lied to you. At least the film's fuck up looks more like a Utah raptor. This is actually what a velociraptor looks like. It's basically also just a giant chicken. Moving 25 miles per hour and hunting in packs isn't the scary part. It's the way they sound. <laughs> the only difference between this next animal and my meat is that it went extinct, the Titanoboa. And if this BGC's length of 50 fuck no feet isn't impressive enough, how about it's three feet in girth? This twisty telephone pole could squeeze at 400 PSI, crushing any 20-foot crocodile that lived at the time. Damn. And this no-bro makes a sound like no other. <laughs> the extinct blubber buzz that used to swallow the megalodon, the leviathan whale. This living sea monster is a distant cousin of our daily sperm whale. What? Except unlike the living load we have today that primarily consumes giant squid, the leviathan had no predators and ate everything. Mm. And the sound alone is enough to terrify me. Congratulations, you made it to the final animal. And I'm sorry you have to hear this, but the T-Rex doesn't actually look this way. Real life reptile looks much more terrifying with a haircut like Grandpa. And boy, do I have news for you. Their arms weren't useless. It said that they could have bench pressed up to 400 pounds. And did I mention they can also swim? Hmm? The sound they made is weird, but the closest relative they have alive today is also weird. It's the chicken. I'm so sorry it had to end this way. What? Enjoy. Chicken is related to the T-Rex. The more you know. Basically, she was terrified and didn't know what else to do with her daughter, so she called the police. 
The police arrived at her home and then talked to Isabella, telling her that if she didn't straighten up, that her mother could legally kick her out of the house. Isabella's mother then called her mm. biological father to come talk to Isabella. He came over to their house and had a long talk with her in the backyard, talking to her about respect. According to him, he thought that they had made a lot of progress, but then a few hours later, everything changed. August 28, 2013, around 9.30 p.m., Isabella's mother, Yeonmi Hoi, arrived home. She told her husband she was going to head upstairs and take a shower. That's when her husband hears these awful screams coming from upstairs. Basically, he runs upstairs to see what's wrong, and when he gets to the bathroom, he sees Isabella slamming the bathroom door shut, locking herself and her mother in the bathroom. Mm. He tried as hard as he could to get that door open, but it was locked. All he heard was screaming and an obvious struggle going on. Then he saw blood seeping through the bottom of the door and called 911. Then, as the door was opening, he heard his wife say the word Jehovah, and then Isabella walked out of the bathroom with a bloody knife. Apparently, Isabella didn't say a single thing, just stared at him and walked away like nothing had happened. He runs into the bathroom to check on his wife when he discovers that she had been brutally stabbed 79 times. Unfortunately, she passed away. By the time police arrived, Isabella had run away from the home, but police quickly found her the following day, hiding in a nearby parking garage. On September 5th, 2013, Isabella was brought into court for the first time, and that's where we see the video of her making all these faces. We'd later find out that Isabella was actually suffering from schizophrenia and had delusions for years. According to her, she didn't remember that she was stabbing her mother. She thought that she was stabbing a woman named Cecilia in order to save the world. The judge accepted her plea of mental insanity and sentenced her to a mental facility. In June 2021, Isabella was given permission to leave the hospital for her therapy sessions. She has expressed remorse for what happened, but also said that her mother was extremely abusive towards her. Dr. Disrespect mm. was sent to jail this morning. This tweet is going viral, oh. literally exposing him. I don't want to read some of this stuff on TikTok because this video might get taken down. The former Twitch employee just exposed him for us. Oh my gosh. There's no name that was mentioned for the person that he was doing it to. But it has came out that it was Dr. Disrespect. Now, as a lot of people know, Dr. Disrespect has been banned off of Twitch for like a couple of years now. And the reason was always unknown. Mm. Dr. Disrespect even on stream saying like, I can't say like why I was banned on Twitch. It's like a whole legal thing right now. Basically, he couldn't leak it because it was all legal and like he just couldn't tell all of his audience. The fact that he was hiding something that maybe was this is... That is so disgusting, dude. But he doesn't, like, I know you can't really say that. It doesn't look like a person that would do that. Like, you know, bro is a white, bro has millions of them. I don't think he would ever do something like that. That's exactly what the comments say underneath this tweet. Fake mm. news, the information isn't confirmed by Twin. Now, honestly, this whole tweet is just speculation. Let me know if y'all think this is true, and what do y'all think about this? Crazy. Dr. was actually talking to a minor. He just confirmed this on Twitter. This wasn't a joke. Everybody thought the news was fake, and that's why he was banned on Twitch, because he was talking to someone under age inappropriately, but, um, no. This is the tweet that he just tweeted. I'll just cut to the juicy part of it. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. He was speaking to someone under age, which is fine, right? These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of mm. being mm. inappropriate. Mm. I guess Twitch saw that in his DM, and that's why he got banned. Oh, that's insane that he literally admitted this. That's actually crazy. He did say, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. No pictures, no crimes. But you know, that's good. I mean, it was just Twitch whispers. But like, bro, this is so surprising. Like, he has a kid. Mm. He's a fan, multi-millionaire, like six foot six. Like, you would never think a guy like this would ever get in, like, a... You never think you would get caught up in something like this. And yeah, what do y'all think about this? Apparently, he didn't do anything illegal, but he... what The rumors were true. This is what all this... That's crazy, man. Dr. Disrespect, you know, is one of the biggest streamers in the world. I don't understand why people in positions like that, they always... It's like they can't control themselves. They always have to do something <sighs> immoral, man. Man, people was always wondering why he got banned. I still remember when he got freaking banned on Twitch or something like that. It was trending, and people kept asking why, why, why. But he could never give an answer. But now, I guess you know why. You wouldn't want something like that to come out. That's basically going to end his career. I don't know how we're going to come out from this. Never in a million years would people think this was the reason why Dr. Disrespect was banned. 
Streamers had to say about Dr. Disrespect explicit messages to a minor. This is the saddest one of all Tim the Tab Man. As you know, Dr. Disrespect and Tim the Tab Man went way back. They always played games together. I remember watching mm -hmm. Tim the Tab Man stream and he was like all excited to play with Doc finally once he switched over to YouTube. Now that this came out, he posted this very sad story on Twitter. It was like, if the messages are true, then I just can't see myself playing with them, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Can't support this type of behavior. By the way, guys, this isn't a made up rumor. He did do this. He literally tweeted that the answer is yes, he did send. Twitch messages to a individual that was a minor back in 2017 and they did some of them weren't inappropriate it's crazy seeing everybody respond jack tap the guy says Ooh. effing disgusting when he puts like the tweet out pokemon just tweets out yuck that's crazy ray says doctor disgusting mm. 40 000 likes that's insane then nadia responds never mind who cares about nadia yeah, my bad. and of course nick Burks responded i'm not gonna put that up on here get a lot of extra stuff to say so i'll go on twitter and look at that i don't know man the guy's like six six millions of dollars his family kids and he was doing this type of stuff and even though this was a while ago this was a couple years ago that he got banned on twitch mm. i don't know what do y'all think about this this is really sad like i said never in a million years you would do Expect someone like Dr. Disrespect for that's the reason why he was banned. And people kind of say it came out like around the same situation. Remember when they said he had that cheating scandal with his wife or something like that? But I think that was a separate situation. I don't know if that's connected or not, but damn. I don't know. I saw that freaking trend out yesterday. Freaking Kai and follow him. Just like everybody, everybody making freaking the uh, pictures about it, the memes and stuff. I'm just like, it's freaking serious accusation, man. I don't get why people in power when they had that get it's like when they get the clout and the money and influence they just can't control themselves i i truly don't get it seekers hey you tell me down below man what do you guys think about that doctor disrespect case man nobody in the million years would i guess that that's it man for this video for you guys today if you guys made it with me to the end you're a true seeker seeking the truth i really appreciate the support like i said guys we're doing these daily uploads you guys gonna catch you in the next one I'm out. Peace, YouTube.